Hello. So, may I have your attention, please? The next, next on stage will be Rul Niskins. Hello, Rul. Hello. Yeah. Yesterday, Rul said, oh, no, no need to tell people what I do. I'll simply wear my uniform. In, in case you don't know what that is, checkered shirt, beard, black glasses, that's a front-end developer. Stickers. So, Rul is a front-end developer who lives and works in the Netherlands. His personal brand is Pixel Ambacht, which means pixel handwerker or pixel craftsman. And he is interested in the bleeding edge of font technology. And after we already heard about variable fonts, he will tell us about the other bleeding edge of font technology, which is color fonts. Thank you. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Nice. Right. Um, yes, my name is Rul. I'm indeed a front-end developer. And I'm also a computer nerd. And thanks to my job as a front-end developer, I suddenly became the font guy. I answered the questions, why does my font look bad on Windows? And um, why does my font download slowly? And why fonts pay for fonts? <laughs> All right. I have four topics that I want to talk about with you today. Uh, the first one is uh, silly font projects that I did. I, I'm not showing you these to show off. Uh, quite on the contrary, I show these so I can explain my level of expertise or lack thereof. Uh, the second thing is uh, color fonts. That was something that I stumbled into and uh, I think it's very interesting. The third topic is OpenType SVG, that is a color font format. I'll get back to that. And in the end, I want to peek into the crystal ball and uh, look into the future of web type a little bit. Right. Not too long ago, I had a really simplistic idea of what fonts are. I really thought they were just bunches of, of rectangular images of letters, and you type a letter. The, let the letter A puts a letter A on screen, end of story. And in some way that is true, but I learned that there is a lot of stuff going on beneath uh, uh, the surface, and there's a lot of complicated stuff that Bianca just uh, showed you uh, some examples of. Um, but this is also to kind of give you an idea of my skill level, and I, I guess most people here in this room get excited by stuff like this. Or the more technically uh, font designers will... Oh. <laughs> Does anybody need a tissue? <laughs> I joined the club now of the technical problem uh, havers. Here. Yes. So. <laughs> I have to get my makeup done, sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Color fonts. Oh. <laughs> Red pixels and green pixels. <laughs> I've got a little piece here, maybe we try this one. Alrighty. Right. So um, you saw this one. That's probably getting you excited. Maybe the technically inclined font designers will really drool at this image, but I'm the type of person who really likes this. <laughs> and I think I might have to explain this. 
There is a WAV file here that's 40 kilobytes. I then run it through uh, Optimizer, and then it turns into a file of 37K. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we just saved three kilobytes of crap. <laughs> so I, I really get excited about this, and this, um, uh, Bianca showed this as well, this is uh, when, you, when you take a font and you dump it as an XML uh, file, a TTX file, uh, you can read all those values and you can tinker with them and you can turn this back into a font and then you can see what happens if you change all the numbers. And that brings me uh, to my second subject, which is silly font projects. Um, when I was working as a front-end developer, I um, had to fix all these problems. Why don't my fonts load? And I, I, I made the thing where a super small font gets loaded, and I check with JavaScript, is that font actually being rendered? And for that, I needed to learn how fonts work. And um, uh, I found out that one way to do that is to just mess around and make your own fonts. And I want to show you three stupid projects. Project number one. Um, I know that uh, letters are drawn against a grid. Uh, the type designer just draws points on the grid and that results in the shape of a letter. But you also have letters that move outside of that box. If you, uh, if you look at at this one, the swash from the K, it moves below the O, and uh, the F moves all over the screen. And that means that this grid that this A is drawn in, and you see the, the little pink box that is like, uh, that, that is the dimension of that letter. It has width and it has a height. And you could move outside of that, and that means that there is a lot of space around that letter. And that's right, let's see how much space there is. Apparently, there are 32,768 uh, 32, points that you can use. And an average font, font uses about 1,000 of them. <coughs> that, means, that means that at either side, there's about 15,000 points that are unused. So I thought, what happens when you fill all that space? with just a black square. As an example, if you, I made a font of that, it's called Pixel Unboxed Blackout. And if you put the letter A on the screen like this in the middle, and you, s you apply my font, it will look <laughs> like this. This is not a technical error for a change. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually supposed to look like this. <coughs> now, if you feed this font to a browser, it gets confused. Uh, there, there are a lot of things that, that work uh, to get that font on the screen, like rasterizers and shape engines and stuff, and they all get confused. And if you apply this font to uh, regular websites, you get funny effects. And I'm going to show you a couple of screenshots of famous sites with this font applied. And I'm, I'm curious if you can see which site it is. Uh, the first one is easy because the logo is still visible. <laughs> Anybody for the grand prize? Wikipedia, of course. This is, uh, as you can see, the page on uh, typography. <laughs> and it, gets, it, it makes all kinds of weird chunks. I guess the blue ones are, are links. And there is some gray text on there that pops through. And I don't know what's going on here. Second uh, screenshot. It's also quite an easy one. Twitter, yeah. This is my, my Twitter page, uh, and I have no idea where these shapes are coming from, but it's important to know that if this font, it, it will expand un unless you put an overflow hidden on the container or if you um, have an input field and then it cuts off. So it doesn't cover the screen entirely, but it makes this kind of m Mondrian-like messes. <laughs> All right. Anybody? It's YouTube. And I search for typography videos, and you see sometimes 
Nails are popping through that, that one, and that one pops through completely. And so that's confusing the browser. Another one, um, this will have sucked up much of your time, I'm sure. No, reddit.com. <laughs> and the last one, I, I must ask everyone below 18 to close your eyes for a second. Pornhub. <laughs> Thank you, Bianca. <laughs> All right. Project number two. I took that idea and uh, I ma turned it into something even more childish. Can you see what's going on here? There is a smudge here that is thanks to the letter A, E. There's a hair on your screen, it's thanks to the O. There's a hair, there should be a dead pixel somewhere. Um, yeah, I forgot where I put them, but... You think this one? Yeah, that's possible. So, I'm, I'm planning to turn this into a proper font and install my manager's computer. He's uh, very anal about clean screens, so um, yeah. <laughs> All right, project number three is some for something a little more, well, <laughs> I was going to say a little more useful, but I think a little less useless is, is better. <laughs> um, I, I was learning about fonts and then I learned about ligatures. And um, this is the famous example. It turns the FI into uh, uh, two characters of the FI into one glyph of FI connected to get rid of the messy dot. And I thought, what instead of the letter combination FY, we can take some marketing bullshit and like synergy, or the letter combination big data, or the letter combination paradigm shift, and turn it into a ligature of bullshit. <laughs> and that worked. Uh, I created a font called Sans Bullshit Sans, and <laughs> it, <laughs> it turns marketing bullshit into actual bullshit. <laughs> and it, this was a really uh, fun... Uh <laughs> the, you, you sh there is a Chrome plugin where you can turn a <laughs> website in... Uh, you can apply Sans Bullshit Sans to that website, website and it uh, will uh, really alert you of all the bullshit that is on the web. All right. So this was a fun project and I was, I, um, I was doing this just for fun, but I was also uh, uh, keeping an eye on what new technology was coming up. I, w I learned about OpenType and I thought it's interesting stuff and I hit upon something called color fonts. I was uh, I was still messing around with icon fonts. I know that's a grave sin. I'm sorry. Icon fonts are a hack. You should use <coughs> FPG. Um, but I was doing stuff like o overlapping, uh, like uh, like characters on top of each other and giving them each a different color to make that parrot uh, over there. It's like dark green, light green, and to <laughs> orange. And um, somebody told me there is. There is a thing coming up called color fonts, and of course, color type has been around for a, for a long time. Um, I don't know how I was doing that, but... Um, color type has been uh, uh, around for a long time. You can do, of course, in full color print, you can do everything you want, and uh, with bootblock printing, you could uh, print stuff on top of each other to get multiple colors. And even, of course, our old microcomputers uh, were able to do some sort of, um, of multicolor fonts. But we didn't have a format today on our modern machines. Uh, there are some experiments like uh, Photofont by, by FontLab, but it's not very widely adopted. So then something happens. In Japan, in the, uh, in the early 90s, a trend started, and I'm of course talking about emoji. They, these colorful characters um, 
were very popular in Japan, and when iPhone, when Apple introduced them on the iPhone in, uh, in 2007, they really became popular in uh, Europe and America and the rest of the world. And it got to the point that all these, all these characters got Unicode endpoints, and it meant that they are expressible like the letter B or uh, the exclamation point or the ampersand, you can also express the pile of poo as a Unicode endpoint. But we don't want black and white emoji, we want color emoji, um, and OpenType does only do black and white. So OpenType needs a color format. Um, the great open type bosses, I don't know uh, who they are, they asked the big uh, tech industry, can you make proposals how we should do that in, in, um, in open type? And um, companies like Apple and Microsoft and Adobe, they all replied with, I know a way how to do that. So now we have four different color formats. <laughs> and I want to focus on one, uh, but I'm going to quickly go to all, all four of them to explain them, um, explain a little bit how they work. Um, the first one is called Asbix. They all have very sexy names, so um, get ready. Um, this, wa this was the one that Apple made to make emoji um, visible on their iOS and OS X machines. And uh, that uses plain old PNG and JPEG or TIFF bitmap images. Um, and of course, the downside of, of using bitmap images is that they are big and they don't scale very well. So you, if you blow up a letter big enough, you get, you get an effect like this. Uh, not ideal, I think. Second format is with <laughs> the nice name CBDT, CBLC, by Google. They basically uh, propose the same idea as Apple, only they, they did it in an open way that's not proprietary like, uh, like Apple did, but it has the same problem. It's, uh, it doesn't scale and it has huge bitmap images. So not, not my favorite uh, font format. Um, color C, Paul, by Microsoft. <laughs> um, that's my second favorite font format, if, if I would keep such a list. Uh, my second favorite uh, font format, uh, it uh, uses regular glyphs from the uh, glyph table or the CFF table and just stacks them on top of each other and says this one needs to be this color, this one needs to be this color. So you, you would have three layers like regular uh, glyph shapes and then you overlay them and you get a really crisp image like this. But that's really all it can do. You, you cannot do many other like gradients or stuff. So. That's why open type SVG exists. I, I need to stand close to this thing. This was proposed by Adobe and Mozilla, and they uh, they 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 did. Hello, hello. Yes, I I'll try to stand really still. Um, this uses SVG images. Uh, SVG images are <laughs> SVG images are <laughs> are very versatile. You can do a lot with them, and you can, of course, do this uh, basic shape that uh, the color layer uh, can do. So, if you put all these four color font form formats in a cage, and you let them have a bloody fight, and I think in the end there will be one winner, and that is. Open type SVG. Uh, it can do uh, everything that the other uh, font uh, formats can do. It can do the layer thing that uh, Micro Microsoft Color CPL thing can do. It can you can embed bitmaps in it. That's uh, that's possible. But you can do more. You can do gradients. You can do transparency and even animation. And I know typographers have been waiting a long time for animation. That's. <laughs> at least the more serious ones. Um, SVG is a mature vector format. Uh, lots of uh, editors uh, are able to, uh, to export SVG, and um, it's been around since 1999, so it's, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's a grown-up format. <coughs> uh, 
Um, browsers already know SVG. All uh, the modern browsers uh, can also already render SVG images on the screen, so that's not a problem for them anymore. And it is currently the best supported color font format around. It's supported in Firefox on all systems. Uh, Microsoft Edge, it's the new uh, Internet Explorer on Windows 10. And even Photoshop now supports them since, uh, since a few weeks. Um, and there are already, these fonts are already in the wild. Some of them uh, I'll, I'll show you a few later. So if you wanted to get started with color fonts, you OpenType SVG, you can actually download one today and use, them, use it on your site or in Photoshop. All right. I'll quickly, to, to get an idea of what OpenType SVG can do, I'll give a quick de demo. Uh, yes. Um, OpenType SVG can, of course, do simple shapes. You can do ev everything that you can do in the regular uh, OpenType uh, uh, format, just, just shapes in cubic Bezier pots and in quadratic Bezier pots. Something <laughs> apparently is very important to type designers because they each have their pluses and minuses. So, um, The second one is, of course, uh, just regular color. Third one, very ugly, I know, but that's to demonstrate the idea. <laughs> you can use gradients in, um, in your fonts. And I see where's I have there's one letter f oh yes come back oh. all right um, you can use opacity in different uh, parts of your uh, of your glyph of your or of, of your character the yellow one is uh, half transparent so it uh, it gets a little bit greener on the on the blue thing uh, y you you get the idea. And if you put it on a background, the background will shine through, just like regular opacity. <laughs> oh. um, uh, patterns, you can uh, use uh, patterns if you want. Um, like I said, you can use um, regular old bitmap images in, in it. This is a photo of my garden. <laughs> and of course, animation. <laughs> okay. I'll give you a moment to drool or clean up the vomit next to you. Um, this is, of course, very ugly because um, I'm not a very good designer, but I wanted to bring a g a across the idea that, that you can do animation, and uh, I hope it will look different than this. Okay. Like I said, some of these fonts are already in the wild. This is a project called Bixa Color. I, um, this is a font designed by Mark van Wageningen from Amsterdam, from Novo Typo. Uh, this is an actual um, uh, wood type that he made, and he designed it uh, on the computer, d digital. He, he made the analog version of it, and then we made a digital open type uh, SVG version of it, and it's it was a really uh, entertaining project, and I learned a lot about it. It was kind of the first uh, properly usable uh, OpenType SVG font on the web, so that was kind of nice. Um, Bungie by David Jonathan Ross is uh, also available as OpenType SVG um, uh, font you can that you can use today. And of course the beautiful Trajan that uh, Photoshop released with their, um, uh, their new uh, f um, Photoshop version. It has uh, a lot of colors, versions embedded inside as uh, stylistic alternates. That's not how it's supposed to work in the future. Uh, but um, there is currently no proper way to change the color of your open, of, uh, uh, you cannot change the color of your uh, characters right now. So that's uh, at least in Photoshop. So that's the only way to, to get this in Photoshop with using stylistic al alternates. Right. Open type SVG in the real world. I, I guess there are three steps in uh, getting a font like this uh, to exist and to, uh, to be usable. Um, you have to design one, uh, you have to create a, create a font file of it, and you have to <laughs> use it in a website, eventually. Um, 
Designing a typeface, you can do that today. Uh, I think uh, all the, the major um, um, font design s software supports it. There's a project called uh, Font Self where you can uh, you can even design your font in, in Illustrator or in Photoshop, and it turns it into a proper uh, color font file. So that's very nice. Um, these programs will poop out a font file that is just a regular OTF, TTF, WAF, whatever you want, because these open type, these color tables, they are an addition to uh, the open type standard. That means it's a regular old font that will work anywhere, and it has a little bit of extra information that says these are the color glyphs. And if you can handle this browser or software, you can use the color glyphs. If not, you can fall back to the, uh, the old-fashioned black and white ones. Um, so that means that this can fit in a regular font. You don't need any new fancy format for it. And that also means that you can just use it with font face in, uh, in a website. This is how it would look uh, uh, on the left uh, if if you had an old uh, browser like uh, Internet Explorer or something, and even Chrome, by the way, there they Chrome doesn't support any of the formats. And on the right, it would look. Uh, this is how it would look in uh, Firefox or uh, Microsoft Edge, and hopefully other browsers soon. Uh, I also wrote a little tool that will check uh, which of the four formats are uh, supported. If um, if you want to know beforehand, this browser supports uh, this type or it supports uh, that type, so you can uh, decide which kind of font you want to offer um, to the uh, to the browser. Right. Another aspect of OpenType SVG is, of course, the colors. I I just said that in Photoshop you cannot change the color of, uh, of the font. Um, on the web, you can you, you have basically three options to mess around with the colors. The first one is to not mess around with the colors. Um, a designer can uh, say, I'm, I'm going to hard code the colors in this font, and you cannot change them at all. Well, end of story, I guess. Um, the second option is uh, making use of a CPAL table that works for Microsoft's format and it works for Adobe and, um, and Mozilla's format. Uh, and that looks a little bit like this. You get a CSS variable for each layer in your font. And this letter A has three layers, so you get three colors. And you, and you, can, you can use them like regular um, Font like uh, regular colors in your CSS. You can use um, the name like hot pink, or you can use uh, hexadecimal code, or you can even use RGBA codes or HSL if you want, and uh, get that transparency in there. Um, this, as far as I know, isn't supported anywhere yet, so this is future, futuristic uh, color uh, changing. Another thing that does work more or less already is that you can inherit the regular text color. Um, so you don't have to do anything with fancy uh, CSS variables, but you can just set the color like you're used to. Um, and if the color fonts get rendered on the screen, it will get that color, hot pink, and you can do some things in the font. For instance, if you add black, you can make a darker. Uh, you can make a darker hot pink. If you add white, you can make a lighter one, and you can you have a little bit of control about the color that that uh, is used in your glyphs. All right, the dark side of color fonts. Um, color fonts are are pretty bleak, um, and they aren't a super big priority by uh, with all font makers uh, browser makers and um, that means that browser support is it's not very good um, I created the test font to, to check all the things that you can do with SVG like uh, like animation and uh, and, uh, and opacity and uh, all kinds of weird stuff just to see how browsers handle that and you uh, this font is called Lapis Legit. Um, that's a that's a delicious layer cake with all kinds of color uh, uh, colors in them. 
Um, the font is a little less delicious, but more useful, I think, in this uh, context. It's, um, it shows you that, for instance, uh, you can use animated uh, glyphs in uh, Firefox, but not in Edge. And you can only use animation with SMIL, the, the, the SVG-specific uh, animation language. But you cannot use CSS animations for both of them. The spec says it's optional to implement, so you don't... So, 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 so browsers don't need to implement it, so they unfortunately chose not to do it taking all the fun out of color fonts. Um, Edge doesn't support embedded bitmap images. Uh, Firefox does, and um, <laughs> Firefox supports a real mindfuck, as we call it in our industry. Um, you can embed a text block inside an SVG, uh, and in there you can put a paragraph of uh, uh, lorem ipsum, you can apply Comic Sans to it, and it will render as a paragraph of lorem ipsum in Comic Sans. And you can put that inside a glyph. <laughs> in fact, you can put entire websites in a glyph. <laughs> and uh, that's why developers call that a mindfuck. <laughs> because you can imagine the circular dependency that happens when a glyph says, OK, I need to render text. Who is rendering my text? Well, the render engine. And the render engine will eventually render the font, the glyph that has the, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all, all, with all the problems there are, I think OpenType SVG is, um, is the nicest font. It's the, it's, it, it wins. <laughs> right. Um, I'll quickly do a glimpse into the future. I'm running out of, of time a little bit. A uh, glimpse into the future. If you thought what I just told you about what SVG can do is not proper typography, then <laughs> get ready. <laughs> you will be able to do much more when SVG hits the scene. It's being developed and um, uh, some browsers support it more or less. Um, and it can do stuff like Gaussian blur and drop shadows and it can do 3D shaders and it can do masking and all kinds of interesting stuff. But the real horror is you can embed movies <laughs> in SVG. So you can embed movies in your glyphs. Uh, <laughs> and you can embed audio. So I guess the text will read, it, read out in the, in the future. So the future is really... Right. I quickly want to touch on the subject of variable fonts that Nick talk, uh, talked about. Um, you c I, I haven't experimented a lot with, th with this, but I know that you cannot do it with OpenType SVG. SVG cannot uh, handle, um, it's, it's not connected to all the, the, the mechanics that, that, that make uh, your font squishy, as us professionals call it, uh, variable fonts. But Color Cepal can, because it uses the regular glyph table and the CFF table. So um, anything that you can do there, you, ca you can do that with a color font. And of course, if, if you all think alike, then we think, yes, variable emoji. That would mean that instead of like saying font weight, you could say something like uh, poop weight in the future and you can make the pile of poo like a little n cute nugget or you can make it a gigantic <laughs> pile of manure. Um, <laughs> or you can have a slightly irritated smiley uh, that would be like at f font anger zero and then you can make an insanely delirious angry one at um, uh, at font anger thousand because the internet deserves a thousand degrees of anger. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to wrap up with a quote by uh, John Hudson. Uh, it's because there's a nice little connection between color fonts and variable fonts because color fonts turned out to be a mess because four different formats were, were made and that was because every big company like Apple and Adobe, they were all doing their own thing. And luckily they learned from that and that's why variable fonts, they came all together and it was, uh, it was like a combined effort. And um, here he says, John Hudson says, um, uh, it's like a year ago I think, uh, that 
they won't repeat that error with something that's actually important. <laughs> Dissing colophons in a way. All right. That wraps up my uh, uh, talk, and I hope you will leverage some of the paradigm shift that you will find in this typographic energy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Rul, for this um, very informative but also entertaining talk. Are there any questions? Are media queries allowed in SVG OpenType? Uh, I tried that. Um, I don't have internet, so, so I cannot uh, show it here. They work? Um, not. No, they, <laughs> they don't. I, uh, I tried, uh, it would be very cool that if you, if you make your, your font like 16 pixels, then it changes, and if you make it 24 pixels, uh, that it would change, but unfortunately, in the current uh, two browsers that support it, they don't listen to it. Uh. Uh, more like a remark, like uh, than a question is, uh, so you, s you kind of brushed over the uh, pixel-based uh, color font formats, uh, I like the, um, w w they have something to offer in to the fight, which, uh, as you just said, is not supported in SVG yet, so that means they can be responsive to size. So the thing is, you can have multiple image for the m multiple sizes, and though you can have a, a version for small sizes, which is oh, right. very, s very simple and uh, has no de detail, and then you have like one or two or three or five or how many you need for different sizes, it obviously blows, blows up the file size, but then you can, can have nice, perfect, like, so you right. can see it the same, the, so Apple picked that technology because it's actually the same thing how they handle their icons. In so the, that's in the an system. ethics then. And so if you look at the, at the, at the one very nice example is the home icon from uh, macOS. So if you have it in the sidebar very small, then then you just basically like just a, uh, have like a very simple shape, but if you look at like hit hit, um, if you look it up in a quick look, you see that there is in the big Im image there's actually a flower pot on the more window. Detail, all right. And the window is not there in the small icon, so that's kind of a big difference. Um, I did not know that, but that's r a very cool concept. Uh, and please drop the, the, the Google apps. the Google font from your website because n there's a Google font the color font format because it's not supported anywhere, not even in Google font the Google apps. Not even, it's, I think it's only useful in Android for local yeah. fonts. And so, and nobody is like implementing it anywhere else. So it's. If they had a cage match and were fighting, I know CBDT would go down first. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst. It's a wimp. Um, just thinking, uh, it's related to the question about media queries. These parts of SVG that are an SVG spec that in theory are also supported in the SVG and OpenType spec, who decides what of that gets uh, implemented or supported or included in the actual OpenType SVG spec? I don't know exactly who, but I know there is a, 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 a spec for OpenType which is b basically describes a subset of all what SVG can do. And it, uh, I think the bottom line is it can do everything, but uh, this is optional, like animations, and this has to work. So is the stuff that's uh, not supported just because the applications aren't supporting what's in the spec, or is it because they haven't brought that stuff into the spec yet or ever? I, I don't know. Um, it's. It's a, it's a pretty big mess, and uh, I got to speak to one developer, uh, uh, and I asked him, well, why, why isn't everything supported on his site? And he said, oh, it's, it's just a bunch of iframes on the screen, and I don't know how, what to do. And he threw his hands in the air. And uh, So yeah, I, I think they, they're starting just um, because it's not solidified in the, in the spec very well yet. I just think they're cherry picking what they want to support, uh, at least feel like that. Um, the idea that an SVG2 glyph can contain a video sounds very stupid at first, yes. 
Yes. But do you think that there might be some useful aspects of that? I, I suppose people will use this for really ornamental, uh, experimental, uh, arty stuff. And I don't think you will check bbc.com and uh, they will have the headlines in uh, like, a, like <laughs> have the matrix playing inside each glyph uh, anytime soon, I think. So I think th uh, I, I wouldn't know wha what people are going to do eventually with it. But I, I'm I really get excited by the fact that this is now in the toolbox of a type designer. You can just ignore it or you can just apply it. And I think in a couple of years we will see very creative uh, typefaces, maybe with embedded movies or even embedded audio that, um, that do stuff that we cannot think of right now. So, yeah. Thanks. Cheers. Well, I think there could be something that, that these things are feeded in in a way uh, so that you, you're not preparing like a letter set and then adding the movie, but like let the user type and still the same movie would be in there or something. I mean, that, that these two sources are brought together uh, not before it's shown, but later maybe by the, by the user. I'm, I'm very, if I, if I ever get back here in a couple of years, I'm maybe demoing that. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> I type something, you, you implement the we movie. We stream then. the okay. talk into the letter, yeah. <laughs> All right. Any more questions? No? All right. Well, thanks for Perfect. having me. Thanks a lot, Roel. Thank you very much, Roel. <laughs>